Well, about today's video, I put up this post on my community tab about a month ago and most people thought I forget about it, I did forget about it, but someone reminded me, so I'm gonna do it now. So the post basically says once and for all, ask all your JV related questions and I'm gonna answer them once at a time. And if the numbers are correct, I got something like 400 comments and if I try to answer all of them in one video, the video will get too freaking long. So I'll try to divide them into multiple videos and see how that goes. Now before we start, I'd like to thank Unacademy, the sponsor of this video. Unacademy is an Indian online learning platform which you can use to excel in your J preparation or NEET preparation as well. So particularly who is this intended to are mostly people who are getting into 11th standard this year. They can start really early with their preparation and the people who have already decided to take a drop. The dropper's batch also starts from 21st and the 11th batch starts from 11th, 11th of September that is. Being a JE or NEET aspirant, you need to have a good structure to your study plan and an academy have one of the best teachers available online you can access from your home. Especially because it's really impossible to go to a coaching studio physically during this pandemic until this COVID-19 things get over. So you should really capitalize on that. And also people at An Academy told me that there will be a price hike from 11th of September. So try to get your subscription before that if you want to join An Academy. With all of that out of the way, let's get started with the video. And so here's the first question. I'm able to solve NCRT level PCM sums, but it is difficult to solve J main sums. What am I missing? Please help. What you're missing is basically practice at that higher level. If you like, it's pretty obvious if you don't practice at the J main level, you wouldn't be able to solve J main questions. So if you're comfortable with NCRT, get a little bit out of your comfort zone. If you can't solve those, see the solutions, see how the question was approached, how different types of questions are approached in a different way. Try to find patterns and you'll get there, you'll get there with practice. Second part of the question says, I have math sphere, when I try math? Okay, basically it's a math fear thing. Now it doesn't matter if it's a math fear or a fear of something else. The only way to get rid of it is to get comfortable with it. And how do you get comfortable with something? You do it more. You practice maths really a lot. I'll tell you about myself, I wasn't that bad at math till 10th, but 11th math is a lot different from class 10th, you know that. And I was kind of intimidated at the start of 11th with maths, but I took a challenge. I started practicing maths more and more, like more than the two other subjects, and gradually it got a bit more natural and I got a bit more comfortable with it. Okay, next question is how to solve the book effectively, like there are examples, worked out examples and exercises, what sequence should one follow for best outcome? Now see, there is not really an effective way to solve the book. See, the books were actually formulated by pretty expert people. So if they have formulated a book in a particular chronological order, it's pretty obvious that you have to follow that same order for the best results. Now you can't just go to the exercise straight away. If you have a teacher, you might want to skip the theory, that's optional, but follow the order as much as possible. Ideally, how long would you spend on each chapter while studying for the first time and revision? Again, this depends heavily on the chapter you're talking about, like something like GOC will take much more time than a much niche chapter like LDI or not. And moving we'll on to the next question. All those who are in class 11th would have the same question, how to start preparation and how to carry it forward, please give a two year strategy. Now for the first part, how to start a preparation is to just start. Start with each of the subjects, then start with the first chapter with each subject. And to give a two year strategy, see, uh, strategy is a highly subjective and personal thing, the same strategy doesn't work for everyone. So I can't really give you a cookie cutter strategy that's gonna work for each and every one of you. Next question is, there is a lot of confusion in my mind about how to proceed further with my studies now that J advanced has been postponed, can I give some suggestions and how one should proceed it now? When I can really understand how hard it is to wait even more for your exam that you've been preparing for so long. But but if I have to give a but if I have to give a suggestion it's pretty obvious that you have to finish the syllabus and revise it over and over again but I know it will be hard. I mean, even in college, I know how hard it is to study in lockdown and it gets super boring because all you do is just stay inside your home and study. So try your best to cope up with that. Don't burn out. Keep doing other things. Keep talking to your friends and also do the revision. 
Next question from TechnoTuber. Okay. My questions are how to deal with backlogs during preparation, how to maintain a good score in weekly coaching test, how to deal with procrastination and lazy behavior in J preparation, and how to effectively watch online lectures. Now here's a reply to that same question and it sums up my answer pretty well. It says for one study, for two study, for three study, and for four watch. But how do you effectively watch an online lecture? So just watch it. Don't scroll Instagram in your online classes, that's it. Okay, next question is, hey, I have only one question. Can I continue coding and chess with J preparation? Yes, you absolutely can. Try to segment your time, like so try to separate some time out for that. Hobby or some other escape from just your J preparation stuff. It's really important to avoid burnout. So, best of luck with that. You should really continue. Next question, this one is pretty long. I I think it says lower branches in IIT will my branch study by different from CS branch in IIT and do things though in CS branch in IIT have advantage and related to things required for placement. So there's a huge misconception that only CS people will get placement, it's not like that. Like, and if you are in another branch, why will they teach you computer science stuff? It's not related to your branch, unless it's not related to your branch. Like if you're in Electrical engineering or artificial intelligence or maybe like engineering science we taught a bit of computer science stuff but again you are not just going to IIT or going to college just to study computer science if you are not getting computer science or if you are opting for some other branch you will be taught that branch as well but again in most colleges you are given the option to take other branches courses so so technically yeah you can offer some CS branch courses if you want Next question is how to bring consistency in studying and follow a routine for a long time. Again, all of that comes with practice. With some motivation and some practice, you'll get into consistency. And with consistency, you will eventually start following your routine or schedule. Another thing that's really important is to not beat yourself up when you are not able to follow your schedule or routine that you made up. How to deal with backlogs of 11 when you have six months to January. Again, it is one of those pretty pointless questions which can be solved with pretty simple logic. So what is the problem here? You have to complete some backlogs. How to complete backlogs? You have to study. That's it. Figure out some time, get some time out of your hand and study. Because why most ITNs I have seen left their huge packages job and doing YouTube or some other sectors rather than to do the job as ITNs, that is engineers. I think there is a really wrong information or conception you have, like how many IIT and YouTubers can you mention. I think you can name maybe 20 or 30 of them at max. Now how many engineers actually get graduated from an IIT every year? More than 10,000, right? And that really doesn't become the most of IITs. And if someone is quitting their job and doing something else, it's what they like. Like if someone is actually able to quit their highly paid job and do something that they really enjoy, I think that deserves a salute from all of us. And that's really a good thing. And I guess that's really a good thing that not many people will have the courage to do. Now this is another popular question that is tips for students in class 10, how to start J preparation being in class 10. And oh shit, I forgot to wear my glasses. I have to look smart in these videos. Well. For class 10, you can have two approaches. Evaluate how clear your concepts are. If you think your concepts aren't clear enough, try to consolidate them. Try to have solid concepts from class 9th and 10th that will really help with your preparation when you go to 11th and 12th. Like without a strong foundation, it will be really hard. And if you already have a good foundation, you can start with 11th chapters. Start with the first few chapters of physics, chemistry, and maths. If you find it too hard, don't stress about it because you already have 11th standard to deal with it. Now you can try to get some chapters done. If you even complete like five chapters of class 11th while you're in class 10, that's a plus point. You start five chapters ahead of everyone else in your class.